Hello folks and welcome to my channel. Are you keeping yourself safe as we go out into the new normal world of ours? Stay healthy, alright? Before moving on to the review, it would be cool if you could help me grow this channel. So please subscribe and click the bell. You know the drill. So on to the review. Let me talk about this one-year-old Harley Davidson Street 750. Although I actually owned the bike for just about 6 months, I have clocked in a significant amount of mileage into it. A few months ago, I made a quick specs and initial impressions vlog of the bike. I'm leaving the link below. Please check that one out as well. So what do I love and what are the things that I don't like that much about this fine looking 750cc machine? Of course, this is based on my experience of owning the bike and this is only my second bike above 200cc. Let's start with the things I don't like. Number 1. The riding position. It is fine and my legs are not that long to complain about it, but I feel like the foot pack positions could be a little bit forward, just a little bit to stretch out the legs some more. In fact, you will only feel uncomfortable in long rides. I actually experienced some cramping pains on the right leg if I ride for about more than an hour. This can be fixed of course by installing third-party forward control modifications. Number two of the things that I don't like much about the bike is the warm-up. Now I'm not sure if it's just this unit that I have but it seems that I have to let it heat up a bit before I run. Otherwise, I'd encounter shifting issues and get stuck in a gear. But if you warm it up for at least 3 minutes, you're good to go and there's no trace of this issue as the shifting is really good and precise. Item number 3 of the things that I don't like is the build quality, particularly the wiring. You hear this complaint about the sloppy wiring harness. Should be not in major as long as no wiring gets stuck, shorts and burns. It's just not that pretty, but it's nothing zip ties can't fix. I accidentally found out something I don't quite understand about the design. It's the underseat of the bike where the computer is located. The seat seals and secures it from the elements, but from below, the rear wheel splashes whatever it runs into onto the underside and directly into the bike's computer, electricals and security module. I don't know how water resistant these things are, but I'd rather have them safe from any water or mud splashes. So how to fix this? I will try to apply silicone sealant to these holes and gaps. Let's see how that works. Item number 4 on why you would not like the bike as much is because it is wide. It's not that I don't like that the bike is wide, but in heavy traffic, you tend to get stuck. I guess it's something that you have to live with in big bikes in general. Split lanes whenever you can, but most of the time, chill and wait. But then, exhaust fans engage and you chill and wait with hot air blowing onto your crotch. At least try to be calm and look good. We're in a fine looking bike anyway. Now let's go to the last item on the hate list. No slipper clutch. Newer, cheaper bikes have this safety feature, but the Street 750 does not have it. If you downshift correctly, it shouldn't be an issue. And in my case, I locked the rear wheel only once. So it really helps to prepare for twists and turns, rev match, and you'll be fine. A grippy tire would also be a plus. Now let's talk about the positive side of owning the bike. Number one, the power. It can speed up and speed up quick. The torque comes from the V to an engine. And it's even and consistent at every gear, at least from the second to the sixth gear. You won't really as much as you would with more torquey bikes out there staying true to its cruiser character, in my opinion. Second reason to like the bike is because it sounds good. 
As long as you install a matching aftermarket pipe, of course, it'll sound better. And since mine is upgraded to a Screaming Eagle, as opposed to the quieter stock pipes, the low loud pipes match the look of the Street 750. Other motorists also acknowledge the sound and give you a little space, just enough for you to do a quick pass. Now, on to the third reason to love the bike is because it shifts right. The shifting is also something I like. I find it to be quite quick and precise and you somehow have an idea of what gear you're on, although a quick glimpse into the gear indicator in the panel gauge will also tell you that. I used to have a hard time finding neutral. Now, after a few months and a few thousand kilometers, it's easier. Number 4 reason for liking the bike is its stopping power. Braking is just enough to make you stop the 500 pound machine and the dual channel ABS gives you some assurance that you will not lock the tires and you won't skip. Now on to reason number 5. It is stable. The bike is fast and keeps up in most group rides. And as it is stable even in high speeds, the bike lets you know that you may be running too fast. It's really fun to ride it, although you feel the motor's vibrations when you hit 120. Anything below that is cruiser-like and cool. And finally, talking about vibrations, you get a lot of compliments riding the bike and it's quite nice that people also admire the machine. Good vibes! So there, a quick owner's review of the Harley Davidson Street 750. From the looks, the place it takes me and the overall experience of owning this bike. A few months in and I am happy. Thank you for viewing and please subscribe. See you around.